Hello, everybody, and welcome to Senior Living Live. My name is Melissa. I hope you're having a fantastic day today. Well, we have a truly unique webinar for our viewers who are interested in how senior living communities are created from really the ground up. We are specifically talking about a brand new community coming to the East Memphis, Tennessee area set to open up in 2023. It is called Opus East Memphis, and it is currently under construction and will come to life courtesy of the gentleman you see here, Sage Stone Partners LLC, a development and investment team that has been at the helm of creating several beautiful and stunning senior living communities, this one included, and this will be the latest and greatest Opus East Memphis, of course. Joining me now, the men you see here from Stage Stone to answer some questions about the new community and how a community is created is Patrick Bryant and Dave Dugalinski. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank Glad you for to be having here. us. Yeah, excellent. Well, let's let's dive right in. So we want to know a little bit about you guys. Talk a, a little about Sage Stone, but we want to hear a little bit more about yourselves and, of course, your vision for the company in, say, the next five years or so. Absolutely. Well, again, thank you for having us. Uh, we're excited to be here. Uh, my name is Dave Dublinski. I'm the managing partner for Sage Stone Partners. Um, my background, I was uh, heavily involved in investment banking up until about 10 years ago uh, in New York City, um, primarily in real estate finance. Um, and so I spent the most, most, most of my career financing projects like this and in other sectors of commercial real estate and residential real estate. Um, I made the decision to relocate to Atlanta from New York 10 years ago and get into the private equity, real estate development and investment side of the business. Um, you know, there was a lot of drivers for that. Obviously, the credit crisis was one. Um, I wanted to get uh, closer to uh, kind of start to finish uh, looking at a project when it's a piece of dirt uh, versus coming in later in the process. Um, it's a lot more tangible. Um, I like the creative aspect of the of the design process and the construction process, and and truthfully, uh, learning that side of the business from design to construction uh, to land acquisition really uh, made us better investors as well, just overall. And so um, I founded a company uh, about eight years ago, which was the predecessor or sister company of, of Sage Stone called Aspire Development Partners. Um, Arbor Company was one of the first operators that we worked with. Uh, we made a very strategic decision to work with only best in breed, both on the design side of the business, but the construction side of the business and obviously the operation side of the business with Arbor. And so we've enjoyed a, a tremendous run over the last seven years. Um, you know, Patrick Bryant, who's on the phone with me, is one of our one of our all star creative uh, visionaries. And uh, you know, he actually worked at the time for uh, what was a third party vendor uh, providing interior design services. And so uh, we made a very strategic decision a few years ago to bring everything as much as we could in house to control those resources and to allow them the freedom um, to be more creative. We we really try to focus our design and, and our company in terms of being designed forward. And so, you know, hopefully it shows through what you'll see today and, and that we are uh, not what people think senior living is. Uh, we really kind of focus on a hospitality concierge, you know, delivery method. Um, you know, a lot of really modern aesthetic, uh, which is unique. I think a lot of people have a perception that, um, you know, senior living is kind of a more of a, you know, kind of old country club mansion feel. Uh, but we really try to do it a little bit differently, both in terms of the materiality that we introduce, but also uh, colors. You know, we try to be playful because, you know, we think it's just a, a unique chapter in people's lives to kind of uh, act like kids again to an extent. And so um, we're very excited to be here. As, you know, as far as the company is concerned, we have uh, we have, I would say, specialized in senior housing uh, for the last seven years, but we have broadened and kind of started to, to do a lot more diversified development in areas of hospitality and office and uh, traditional multifamily. And so that's allowed us to bring, um, you know, both on the design side, but also on the operating side, you know, different ideas and, you know, cross pollinate across different commercial real estate asset classes. So we really pride ourselves on our, um, you know, being um, diversified in terms of what we do, uh, but also being specialists in certain areas. But Again, thank you for having us. And you know, Patrick, I'll turn it over to you for a little background. 
For sure. Uh, just a little background about myself. Uh, I started with Sage Stone um, when we started about five years ago uh, when the company was founded and have been an interior designer for 12 years plus now at this point um, and just have been very fortunate to end up in the senior living world and you know it's just it's become one of the more challenging and rewarding uh, types of design for me to do so you know it, it constantly keeps us on our toes and we're trying to figure out what the latest and greatest is and look you know in the future and um, so it's really exciting it's a, a niche market that um, at the end of the day you can really be proud of and feel good about so it's fun and to I admire people it. like you who can literally look at dirt and envision this great grand <laughs> community uh, as as people will see when they look at the photographs for for what actually will be um, in 2023. Uh, we're rhyming here. I feel like a rap star. Um, so uh, I, I truly admire that. And I think that our viewers are going to admire it too when they see uh, what you guys have in store for this particular community. And, and, and it's kind of, I think every community is unique. So the blueprints will be a little bit different for each, each one, but I think the processes are sort of the same. And that's a little bit what we'll get into today. So it was announced in 2021 that you would be partnering with the ARPA company to create this development and we have mentioned the name it is opus east memphis so why memphis why the name opus and why now sure um so why memphis um we look at memphis uh as from an investment perspective as a sunrise city uh, meaning the sun is just beginning to rise there uh, obviously nashville has enjoyed uh, a lot of you know a lot of focus and a lot of investment uh dollars over the past few years as as the music scene in, in Nashville has grown. Uh, but Memphis has really got a really rich history to it. Um, um, you know, spending time in Memphis over the last three years, we've gotten to know um, what defines Memphis and it truly is the people. Um, you know, we also looked at the quality and the age of the competition within the market and, you know, kind of analyzed supply demand drivers that, you know, to make sure the project was supportable. Um, but when you look at Memphis, it's got a lot of really good, uh, good attributes. You know, the river is obviously a natural amenity, um, but, you know, it's really driven by three main industries, which is agriculture, healthcare, and healthcare technology, and then logistics and logistics technology with the airport and FedEx. And so from an investment perspective, those are all very large uh, investment uh, areas within at the, at the national level. And that's three areas where Memphis is known for. So it's uh, on the macroeconomic perspective, there's been a lot of growth in Memphis. I would also say from a, from a local leadership perspective, um, Memphis has had tremendous leadership over the past few years. Uh, they've made a lot of investment in their public infrastructure, whether it's the redevelopment of the riverfront, the convention center, the new airport terminal that opened. And so we look at those types of things where we look at local leadership to see if they're investing in the community and not just investing in the community or the technology of old, but trying to look forward and, and try to invest for the future. And so that really drove us, uh, drove us to Memphis. Uh, but I'd say overwhelmingly, it's just the quality of the people and the quality of the culture they call the city of soul. Uh, and, you know, having, like I said, visited there many times and you know, now part of the, uh, Part of the business community um, is the people that really differentiate Memphis. Um, Patrick, I know you've been there many times now with me, and you may have a different perspective. But you're also having grown up nearby, uh, have been there, you know, been to Memphis many more times than I have. For sure, um, Memphis was, you know, in my backyard growing up. It was, you know, the closest big city that we had, you know. Um, so grew up going there a lot and what's really exciting about the time that we're in right now is all of these southern cities are re really revitalizing at an amazing pace i mean we see it in nashville with austin texas and now memphis you know it's just really exciting uh for that to start taking place and for people to start noticing these great cities and really for memphis to become the bell of the ball again you know, it was always such a beautiful city and great architecture. And like Dave said, the people are 
just the epitome of hospi hospitality. So the bell of the ball. I love that. And, and I do 100% agree with you. We're, we're all located in Atlanta, if anybody wants to know. And so we, we see the revitalization of, of all of these cities from Atlanta, Chattanooga, um, all these cities in the South. And, um, and it's great. You know, I think it's good for, for everybody all across the board and, and Hey, you're in a warmer part of the country. So come on down. You, <laughs> you, you Northerners up there. We know it's chilly up there right now. It's not too bad uh, down South. So come on down. Um, so let's, let's start kind of with that blueprint, right? you talked about looking at dirt and then creating something from that, that will actually come to fruition. So uh, from the blueprint phase to the construction phase, what goes into that gentleman and how does that initial vision continue to evolve as time goes on? So I'm gonna go back because I did not answer the second part of your question, which was why the name Opus, and then I'm gonna let Patrick answer the, answer the question. <laughs> you just asked. And so Opus, uh, outside of being the brand of a great wine, um, is defined as, you know, any artistic work, especially one on a large scale. And again, as we try to differentiate ourselves in terms of design, uh, it just felt like it was an appropriate name for this community. Uh, just given the scale of the community, something, uh, that we continue, you know, we, we want to be very, uh, art focused um, and, you know, on a large scale. So that was, that was what really what drove the name Opus is that we wanted to encourage the artistic, uh, you know, uh, vibrancy within the project. And again, this is the largest senior housing project ever developed in Memphis history. So um, there you have it. That's Opus. Wonderful, wonderful. And um, no, no pressure at all, right? <laughs> With that last little disclaimer. <laughs> Yeah. So you, you guys better go big or go home. That's all That's we're it. saying. But I think you I think you will accomplish that. And, and I think everybody will see that by the time we're done here. So, so let's get uh, to the processes, guys, of how it starts to what it looks like and, and the end result when it's finished. Yeah, so I'm going to start from kind of the the market analysis side of things and finding the right local partners. Um, you know, my job as the developer is to make sure that I put the right players on the field, uh, really serving as the quarterback to the team and and directing resources to, you know, to make sure that, uh, you know, we're executing properly. So, you know, we do a lot of planning on the front side, um, even before we get to the blueprint side of things. It's really, uh, really detailed market analysis in terms of you know, what types of amenities do people want to see? We often, you know, organize community groups and, and you know, do a lot of polling and, you know, question of uh, what do people want to see in the community? What types of units? What types of closet sizes? We compare it to other uh, existing properties in the market. And so there's a lot of data analysis that goes into defining what we're going to build and how many units, you know, what's the mix of studios, one bedrooms, two bedrooms, uh, how many cottages should we add to the program as well? Um, and then trying to optimize kind of um, the space programming to, to a budget that works for the market. And so, you know, after we've gone through that, what I consider kind of defining the building program, and we do that from day one with Arbor. We don't really look at projects without the operations team um, sitting there with us from day one looking at the property. So, uh, Judd Harper, the president of the Arbor Company, was with me, and before we committed to the project, Judd was, you know, looking at the dirt with me, uh, you know, in Memphis. And so, you know, what that does these these are very unique buildings because um, if you think about it, it's it's really mixed use in one building. So it's not a mixed use development; it's mixed use in one building. So you've got you've got restaurants that are operating next to gyms that are operating next to a hotel that's operating, you know, next to a multifamily apartment. And obviously we're providing different types of, uh, of nursing services. So you're to an extent operating a hospital as well inside the confines of one, um, one building. And so that was brought to my attention through one of these types of formats. I said, you know, you're, you're doing mixed use in one building. I didn't even occur to me, but it's, uh, you know, there's a lot of planning that goes in on the front side. Um, and then once we, once we do that, we make sure that we've got the right team. So we always have local partners, both on the design team uh, whether it's the civil engineer, whether it's the architect, uh, whether it's the interior design team. Uh, and then it's just a matter of getting the right team in place to execute both the design, the construction, and then ultimately the operations of the facility. Uh, but Patrick, maybe I'll let you kind of take over from there and you know, talk a little bit more about 
you know, the blueprint to construction. For sure. Um, as Dave mentioned, you know, we really start this process pretty early on. So, you know, the, the patch of dirt that we um, had to work with was amazing. You know, um, we walked on to the site the first time and there's a beautiful mansion and rolling hills and beautiful trees and with the Dixon Art Gallery right next door. I mean, we were just given all kinds of, you know, basically bullet points of a pathway of design and concept and it all just laid itself out for us. Um, and we, we ran with it. The, you know, the soul of Memphis, the hospitality, the Southern charm, um, we really wanted to bring all of that into the design um, as we went through um, the process. And, you know, Opus, has been an interesting project because it started before the pandemic. And so, you know, what that gave us was a great dialogue and insight into what was going on, what was to come, what could come, you know, all of these questions were coming up. And so it really allowed us to hone in on those types of uh, aspects of design um, and implement those into this project. So um everything that we've learned from the pandemic is going to be wrapped up in this project and um in a beautiful way um it's yeah it's going to be really exciting and as we continue we just want to create a beautiful environment that people feel at home and uh, you know what we like to say is we want it to be comfortable without being you know homely or you know, dowdy, but we at the same time want it to be really elegant and luxurious um, without feeling stuffy. So it's a really careful line to walk and we have a lot of fun doing it. And like Dave said, you know, we have a lot of um, creative uh, leeway on these projects. So uh, we really push some, some limits and we like to think that we're raising the bar and, uh, coming up with new and better ideas every day, so. So you, you used all those great adjectives to describe the area and, and then Dave's talking about it being mixed use. And I'm just thinking, do people have to hold you back, Patrick, when when you feel all these design ideas? And, and I guess dialing that in, that's gotta be tough, right? It is, I mean, sometimes uh, Dave is good about that. Um, I'll definitely, you know, we kick off a project and my mind goes wild at 100,000 feet. And, you know, by the time we start putting pen to paper, um, you know, closer to 30,000 feet and um, my head's out of the clouds a little bit, but definitely keep that feeling and that, um, that drive to, have the same amount of impact that my original head in the clouds idea had. You know, we, we want it to still have that someone walking in and just going, oh, you know, this is, I'm home, I'm, you know, um, I've made it, you know, in so many different ways. And, and that really is the goal is, you know, we, this is somebody's home. And, and it should feel like home to them. It's a beautiful home, but it's going to be home for them. Um, and, and you mentioned the pandemic. So guys, let's let's shift gears now a little bit because that, that does definitely segue into our next question. And that is some of the trends in senior living. So very different, um, maybe three years ago to what it is now. And you guys are having to incorporate those changes into um, the design, right? So what is the latest and greatest in senior living right now? What are residents asking for and how do you think you'll be able to deliver here? So I'll, I'll take a, a stab at the kind of just to kind of set it up. You know, we really build our communities based on five key principles. Um, we want to deliver a healthy environment, healthy food, physical activity, uh, social interaction and cultural engagement. And so uh, we try to deliver that through the design side of the business, um, you know, in all those different areas. Um, obviously, technology is something that is uh, evolving rapidly. And so uh, you have to be careful in this business because there is a new technology being delivered every day to satisfy some type of uh, request, demand, need. 
uh, but technology also changes very rapidly. So I'm going to focus on kind of the technology side of things. I'll let Patrick take some of the more um, what do people want to see uh, and touch and feel. Um, you know, we've evaluated tons of different technology solutions, um, mainly around uh, life safety. So emergency call solutions, um, looking at different types of, you know, well-being type devices, you know, wearable type devices that we can monitor different types of, you know, major statistics for our, our residents. Um, you know, on the kind of smart side of smart apartment side of things, there's smart technology within the apartments, whether it be the lighting controls, the HVAC controls, um, or any other other types of systems that are now integrated into kind of a smart home delivery. Uh, because um, what we've noticed we want, it's, it's more of an ease of living type concept. We want people to live easier and not be as focused. And a lot of that can be accomplished through these smart technologies. So the technology side of things has been amazing to watch evolve. Um, you know, when we first got in the business, Wi-Fi was, uh, was not talked about very often. Now uh, people differentiate the, the, the buildings or the quality of the building based on how fast the Wi-Fi is. So, uh, you know, we also offer technology classes for, you know, obviously our, our average age is, you know, late 80s typically in our, in our buildings. And um, now we've see, started to see that, you know, people will choose an apartment based on the Wi-Fi signal. And so it's, it's interesting. We've, we've always trended to over-invest in technology and technology solutions. Um, and now with um, not only what the, what the customers need, but it's also the operator. You know, the operator just giving, you know, where labor costs are trending and different inflationary pressures. Uh, we've got to figure out how to be more creative in our delivery and technology plays a major role in that. And so we've looked at, you know, robotic uh, med delivery of, of medicine. And so there's all different things that we've explored. Um, you know, on the pandemic side of things, uh, it did allow us a chance to reset and look at, you know, what types of technologies, materiality we could use to adapt to the pandemic. You know, a lot of that had to do with air quality. A lot of it had to do with the types of services, hard services, a lot more quartz than granite because granite's porous and, and, and can basically, you know, take in the different types of bacteria. Um, and we've looked at different types of unit changes and- um, I'm so proud you know, that he knows that now, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you should be, you should be. But, you know, we've got automatic temperature scanners at the entrances to try to you know, be predictive if someone is falling ill. And so, Again, there's there's a lot of different solutions still being developed that relate to the pandemic, but um, you know we do consider ourselves to be kind of at a leader in that field, and you know we've done a lot of research and we've you know we've looked at a lot of different technology solutions, but you know we do definitely try to differentiate ourselves in terms of technology. But Patrick, I'll hand the you know hand it over to you. Yeah, so senior living is constantly evolving. Like I said before, that's really what makes it exciting um, is it's kind of a, not a new frontier, but I feel like people are starting to look at it that way of like, how do we ask the questions that haven't been asked and um, push ourselves in different directions. Um, so it's constantly keeping us on our toes and one thing that we did after such a great success with our Lakeside at Amelia Island project was we wanted to go back and talk to the residents and get their feedback on the, you know, where they lived, their home, their, their new environment um, on a day-to-day -day basis. And, you know, brutal feedback is what we wanted and what we asked for. And what we learned is that really what they loved the most about the community were the amenities that allowed them um, the freedom, the independence to live their life and experience new things. And so we really wanted to bring that into Opus. So we put a big emphasis on the activity areas, the amenity areas. We've got multiple dining venues. You know, at any point you could, you know, start off your morning with yoga on the Grand Lawn and end it with a mixology class um, in the dining lounge at night, you know, so it's really going to be an exciting um, experience and every day 
um, experience for them to explore new things and learn new things. You know, you can never uh, get to an age where it's not important to keep learning and evolving. So we definitely want to uh, push that with our residents and show them that that's possible. Can you lower the age range for those who can move in? <laughs> I, I'm wonderful. trying to get a space held for myself. For, in okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll move in next door. Um, so this is the fun part, guys, right? We get to, to see um, your vision. And um, as we're looking at this, and I know we're going to uh, see some photos here, um, can you tell us uh, sort of what we've, we've kind of touched on a little bit, sort of the, the historical aspects of Memphis, you know, the good food, the music, the history, and how that all ties into what we're going to see? Absolutely. I'm, I'm going to let Patrick uh, kind of drive on the on the imagery side of things. You know, I will tell you that Opus sits in kind of the arts and cultural center of Memphis. And so the Memphis Botanical Gardens, Audubon Park, the Dixon Art Gallery are all uh, within a, you know, a football throw of the site. And so we carried on that tradition uh, within the design. So You'll notice it's very Memphis focused um, in terms of how we incorporate different um, design ideas into the project, but heavy emphasis on arts and culture uh, throughout the project. Uh, and Patrick can, can kind of take us through a, uh, a test drive of, of what it's going to be. So this is kind of just an overview image of um, our living spaces that we have here at Opus. We have a lot of great textures and patterns. Um, and what really kicked this project off for us was, you know, like I mentioned before, the traditional Southern roots of Memphis. And then also, you know, having the Dixon Art Gallery next door that really drove a lot of our concept. So we really wanted to emphasize art and traditionalism so with that, we took a lot of things that were um, standard, you know, designs that, you know, for instance, you see here a knoll sofa, um, which is a kind of a, a, could be a dated design, and we're taking it and we're going to update it with great fabrics and some acrylic um, panels and certain things. So we basically are taking traditionalism and turning it on its he head is what I like to say and uh, giving it a new spruce up and show that, you know, you can really make something new again. And that's kind of the concept throughout the whole project. Um, and that's how we want our residents to feel as well is, you know, it's, it's never too late to brush it off and um, create a new, and uh, that's what we're trying to create here. So we'll kind of walk through a couple of these. Like I said, the, the art was a big focus for us. So we've actually, um, we're going to have art galleries throughout the project um, with art that residents can go and sit and relax and enjoy. And that's one thing that we found from our Amelia Island project unintentionally um, was that, you know, the residents really liked the art that was displayed and they actually ended up turning it into a happy hour wine and art tour. And, you know, when we heard that, we were just like, oh, wow, how do we piggyback on that? How do we, you know, expand on it? And um, so that's, we put that a lot into this project. And so that built on art galleries throughout the project, um, wall coverings with patterning and fabrics that, you know, really give you, give you a luxury, uh, luxurious feel uh, throughout the project. So, um, yeah, so we have all different types of uh, materials throughout the project. What I like to play on is, you know, in one room, if, for instance, you have a small scale tile, Let's bring in a large scale pattern with it and play on that. So it really just builds on itself as the design goes. And Memphis really gave us a lot of great inspiration 
to keep going in that direction. So as far as, you know, from what I've heard, we've had some really great feedback from everyone. Um, our sales office is scheduled to open uh, at the end of the summer. And, you know, it's really exciting for something like that because it's the first time that the community can really come in and see what you've built and what's, you know, coming their way and really be inside of that environment. You know, whether, you know, although it's a small marketing center, we bring in the same finishes from the main building and create almost a vignette of what you can expect uh, when you actually walk in the front doors for the first time. Yeah, Patrick, why don't you go, go ahead into one of the next slides um, so we can kind of show some of the exterior elements as well. I mean, the feedback has been overwhelming. overwhelming. We, we, have a, we have a great neighbor in the Ottoman Homeowners Owners Association next to us. And so, you know, we were, uh, we pride ourselves in our ability to work and be good neighbors. And so uh, obviously everyone is concerned with what's gonna go in their backyard. Um, and so, you know, through the zoning and entitlement process, uh, we made the community members uh, really partners of ours. And so we took a lot of input um, we tried to respect the design uh, integrity of the neighborhood and, you know, make sure that from a materiality perspective, we were respectful, but also um, we were adding value to the neighborhood overall, uh, because a lot of people get concerned when they, they hear of these larger scale projects going, you know, nearby where they live. And so, you know, we pride ourselves on working collaboratively with, with our partners and our local partners. And uh, I think it shows through just in terms of the quality of the materials, both inside and, and outside the building. But, you know, um, again, we pride ourselves on sense of arrival. Um, and so you'll see we invest and uh, over invest just in kind of the higher impact areas, the front door, the living room, things that, you know, that you would do at your, your that you would do at your house. And so, um, you know, we've got a, a very grand approach to the building. Um, some of the, you know, some of the, uh, I would say grander cottages are located along the main entry. Uh, we've got water features on the front. Um, you know, we've got electric vehicle charging stations. We've got, uh, you know, concierge valet services that will use the house Tesla car to bring people to doctor's appointments, things like that. So there's, uh, it's both the quality of the, of the physical plant, but also the quality of the services that we offer and the quality of the experience as you, as you approach and you enter the building. Um, why don't you go ahead to the next one, Patrick, just show some of the interior renderings that we've got as well. It's beautiful. It's so far stunning. Go ahead. Yeah. So Patrick, I'll let you talk about the interiors because this is, uh, obviously I didn't make this. <laughs> so. All right. Yeah. So, you know, kind of what I'm, how I mentioned earlier with changing up the design of the sofa, you can see here. Um, that's, you know, our interpretation of a modern null sofa. And, you know, we wanted to really play with scale in the lobby. And um, so right when you walk in, you really have, like they said, a sense of arrival, you know, and we wanted to pull from everything that was Memphis. And so we went ahead and put this great grand piano smack dab in the center of the room and you can actually sit around it with a glass bar top on it and have, you know, a mint julep in the evening and listen to uh, someone play the piano and meet new people and have great conversations. And um, so we really brought that into this and gave, you know, great scale with the fireplace. That was one thing that kind of kicked off this room for me. Um, it, I know, it's kind of a small thing to some people, but uh, for me, you know, doing a five foot tall see-through fireplace right in the front lobby just really gives you a sense of that grandeur that we want you to feel um, with this property. And the minute you walk in the door, we hope that that's exactly how you'll feel. It's gorgeous, yeah. Uh, and it looks like we've got the door the dining area. That looks spectacular. Yes, yeah, so um, our, our culinary experiences in any of our properties with Arbor has just been amazing. And that was one thing that we got back um, from our Amelia Island residents 
was that they loved, you know, the dining room and the experiences that that were had from that, from cooking classes and uh, chefs coming in to, you know, speak and different types of cuisines at different nights and just keeping it fresh. And so we really focused on that and we have different dining venues throughout the property. And so, you know, you can start off at, you know, happy hour in the lobby bistro, um, hanging out with people, playing pool, and then move on into the dining area where we have a separate dining lounge that's a little more intimate, um, more low level moody lighting is what I like to say. And then, you know, moving into this great dining room um, that you see here where we've, you know, we've broken it off into sections. We wanted it to feel like a restaurant um, and uh, bring in the, um, the kitchen into the dining room. So we have a huge window where you can see the chefs cooking and preparing everything. And, you know, that's really important to people, especially these days with cleanliness and health um, issues going on all over and coming up every day. And so we wanted to have full visibility um, to how your food's being made. And um, also, you know, it's just really cool to, to be able to look in there and see everything going on and it just gives more activity to the room. So it's been really exciting to build on, on that. And I'll kind of touch on um, some of our amenities as well. Um, like I said, uh, the property gave us a beautiful backdrop to build on. And so we have great courtyards and amazing outdoor spaces, as you see down here to your right. And um, also wellness was a huge proponent of this um, as we moved forward. Um, and so we really focused on a whole wellness wing of this property. So you have not only your standard salons, um, but we have massage rooms, a full spa set up with locker rooms, indoor pool, saunas, you know, you can take a full day and really feel like you've gone out to a five-star resort with, with a spa and, you know, take that time to yourself and it's great. It's really exciting. The beach beds are a wonderful addition or the, the pool beds, I should say, if you could maybe pretend like you're at the beach and, and one of those, um, <laughs> But, but just stunning, absolutely stunning. Yeah, yeah so the, these are just some some real images from past projects um, that we thought we would share to show you some kind of, uh, you know, what you've seen so far has been mostly 3D renderings, uh, but these are real images from some of our current projects that we have. So then this is a good place for, for this next question. Um, and we'll get to the construction time and where we're at and, and when it opens once again towards the end of our conversation. But what does make Sage Stone a leader in your field as we take a look at some of these real properties that are currently in existence and what separates you from other development and investment teams in the country? You know, I, I think there's a few things that really differentiate, um, you know, again, we, this is all about design. And I, I think from a, from, from a design perspective, we are definitely viewed as kind of design forward and leaders within uh, the industry. Um, and as part of being designers and being creative, you have to take, uh, you have to take risk. And for an industry that is, uh, I would say has historically been very risk averse because the, you know, most people think about senior housing and, and think, okay, I want to, I want to reduce risk. And so uh, we think about it a little bit, you know, obviously not from a safety or security perspective, but from a design perspective, we're willing to make investments and not all of them pay off, but we're willing to try new things to see how we can continue to elevate the experience. So uh, that's when we approach every project uh, from a long-term perspective. I think a lot of developers uh, are known for, you know, trying to, to do things as cost-effectively as possible, and then they, they, they sell the project and move on to the next and leave it for the next owner. Uh, we make every decision as if this was our home and we were going to live here for the next 30 to 50 years of our life. 
And so we have found that that proves to be the best experience for us as investors, but also for the operator that operates the building and then ultimately the residents, because, you know, at the end of the day, without happy residents, uh, you know, we're not in business. And so uh, our goal is to make sure that we've got happy residents no matter what we do. And so we, we, we factor that into every investment decision that we make. And, you know, a lot of people look at us sometimes and say, wow, you, you know, you know, how could you do that? Or how could you even think about it? That's so crazy to think about, you know, one example is uh, in which it doesn't seem like it's crazy now, um, but we were one of the first senior living operators and developers to, to use uh, keyless door entries. Um, so, you know, RFID door entries, everyone else had always traditionally used key, you know, keyed entry. So uh, we recognize that seniors often have hard times remembering keys and finding keys and things like that. And so uh, it was a major upgrade at the time. And, you know, when we first started doing it, no one else had done it. And so it's just the little things that we started doing seven years have become industry standard now at this point. And, you know, we're, we're pretty proud of certain elements like that. Um, and I think ultimately the, the, we just have a very passionate, caring team of people uh, from the operator to our designers, uh, to our ownership groups and our investment groups. Um, you know, we, we kind of joke about it, but we really, um, <laughs> our, our goal is to, to help residents and help their families because, you know, aging is a, is a, uh, is, is, it should be elegant. Uh, it's not always elegant and we want to provide the best, uh, environment for you to age and age gracefully in place. And so, um, we call it compassionate capitalism, um, because we really do provide a service, um, and at the end of the day, the most rewarding thing is to go and see that you've built something where people live and they live happily. And so I think, you know, it's the passion, it's the care, it's kind of the long term minded, uh, you know, how we think about uh, value creation and who we create value for. And, you know, like I said, number one, uh, we try to create value for our residents. And as a byproduct, we end up, you know, creating value for our team as well. But uh, Patrick, I don't have anything else you want to add, but that's that's really how we look to differentiate ourselves. Just to piggyback on what he said, I mean, really, I think what sets us apart is that we do care tremendously about the final product and how everyone feels about it and how happy the residents are. And that's really what makes a, a difference, I think, with us is that um, you know, at the end of the day, we're pushing ourselves to think outside of the box and create environments with a fresh take um, so that, you know, residents and visitors and staff all like feel like they're at home and in a, you know, safe space. And um, we really strive to stand out from the crowd and be different with senior living. So like Dave said, you know, we get to take some risks and uh, push the envelope a little bit. So I think that that's really where we shine. Yeah, that technology, beauty, Tesla's charging stations. I mean, you, you really have it all here in this community. It is um, uh, sensational, I think is uh, the proper term to use here. And it, it looks gorgeous. And I know you guys are gonna bring that to life and it's, it's very exciting. So, you know, we talk about target dates for um, the opening of some of these communities and this particular target target uh, opening is early 2023. Where are we at now with the construction guys and how uh, does that target date look? Is it, are we gonna stick to that? Uh, I hope so. Uh, you know, I, I will say that we are in unprecedented times from a supply chain and logistics perspective. Um, we're also facing some cost pressures, but, um, you know, again, we pride ourselves in being um, very, um, you know, flexible in terms of how we approach those things. Uh, but yes, right now we're on schedule to open February of 2023. Um, our cottages will begin to deliver uh, late 2022. Uh, we may or may not, depending on um, whether we've got the ability uh, to move some people in towards the end of this year. But we feel good about the date in terms of the construction activity. Uh, the buildings are fully framed. The cottages are kind of uh, following suit. Uh, the roof is going on the independent living building right now. We'll begin setting windows in about 30 days. And 
Um, you know, the goal is to basically get the building sealed in within the next 60 days so that we can really start the interior work. Um, and so that becomes a critical date in almost any construction project is to get it, you know, top, topped off and sealed in because uh, that keeps the water out of the building. And so we're just now entering a, a good period of weather for Memphis. So we should uh, start to see a lot drier days and uh, a lot more productivity on site. But, you know, Again, we are uh, we are not immune to some of the you know what everyone else is experiencing from a delay perspective, and so some things are we can can control and and think smarter and differently, and some things are out of our control, and so uh, we still feel good about the date uh, opening in February of 2023. And I know you'll do everything in your control. Again, so many things out of your control, but it does give a little wiggle room in case there are some delays, but. But you guys sound like you're, you're going to be right on target. And I know that's exciting for those who are literally counting <laughs> down the calendar days. Yeah. <laughs> no, we, we, we've got groups of people that are uh, have already made reservations and, you know, countless others that are waiting to see, you know, when we open the model unit and the sales, the sales, uh, sales cottage to understand they want, you know, a lot of buyers or renters, they uh, they want to touch and feel it before they commit. And so uh and that that's scheduled to happen in June of this year. So, you know, we'll have something that people can touch, see, see, kind of feel a finished product uh, in you know less than ninety days at this point. So we're we're super excited. Perfect. And guys, as we wind down here, I think it's been very informative, uh, especially for those who do do have an interest and and can't touch and feel yet. This will help certainly give them an hour's worth of, of what they can look forward to. Uh, but any parting thoughts uh, about this particular community that you want people to know uh, or about your partnership with the Arbor Company? No, I mean, our, our partnership with the Arbor Company is truly a marriage and we look at it the same way with our residents. We, we, we you know, we expect everything to be a very long-term relationship um, and it has been. Uh, they've been a tremendous operating partner, uh, really, um, what I consider to be the best in the business. And, um, and we've interviewed every major operator. Um, you know, they manage under 50 communities. They are able to deliver what I call a boutique service delivery, um, where it's very localized and, and very differentiated. Uh, it's not a corporate atmosphere where some of the larger, you know, groups that operate hundreds of buildings throughout the United States, uh, can be a little bit uh, different in terms of how they operate and more um, financial focused than you know kind of resident focused, and so we are we are excited about our marriage to the Arbor Company, the service delivery. We feel like we've got the best uh, piece of real estate in Memphis for this product. Uh, we feel like we've got the best operator in the Southeast, and I've got the best creative team in the business. So. Uh, we're excited for people to be able to come in and, and touch and feel, and we really rather than community outreach, we call it community inreach, and try to bring people into the building to feel and touch and say, wow, I didn't know this was senior housing. And so uh, we're excited to welcome, you know, visitors, residents, and, and, you know, we're working as hard as we can to get it opened as soon as possible. Uh, changing the perspective and the minds of people all about senior living, one community at a time. You guys are knocking it out of the park. So uh, Patrick and Dave, I think this has uh, really opened uh, our viewers' eyes and just how uh, communities, not just this one, Opus East Memphis, but many of your communities uh, really come to life. The thought that goes into each design and how uh, that's all incorporated throughout the construction phase and beyond. Um, this is one more opportunity to sort of toot your horn beyond the Arbor Company, but any other interesting projects you have coming up on the horizon that you, you'd like to share with them, some of our viewers? Uh, we've, you know, we're, as developers, we've always got a pipeline of projects. Uh, I would say probably the most uh, exciting project is also in Memphis. Uh, we've got a large mixed-use development in downtown Memphis that sits between the FedEx Forum and the baseball, the Red Birch Stadium. Uh, it's about 800 apartments, a couple office buildings, two hotels, and so really looking to change the change the game. And so, uh, you know, transformative is probably the way that we like to to you know to describe ourselves. And uh, the only thing we want stuff that's going to deliver impact and change, and and through that deliver you know a very positive impact both from a community and an economic development perspective. And 
Um, yeah, that project should start uh, in the next 90 days as well. And we'll offer some amenities for the residents of Opus to go downtown and, and, and spend some time, you know, eating, dining, playing, um, you know, if they wanted to catch a game or a baseball game or, you know, Grizzlies game. So that's a very exciting project. And we've got a, a few more of these and other uh, major markets, Charleston, uh, Fort Lauderdale. Uh, we're looking at a few projects here in Georgia again. So, uh, you know, our goal is not to, uh, you know, not to have to do 10 projects a year. We just want to do two or three really impactful projects per year. Yeah, so you guys are really working uh, the generations here. Uh, and, and mom and dad can be in the senior living community, and then I can go live uh, down in this, this new project that you have <laughs> uh, ready to unveil very shortly in Memphis. Uh, very, very smart, guys. Very nice. Um, and I, I think that this has been very informative, as I mentioned. And I just thank you both so much for taking the time to be with us today and to share your knowledge all about senior living. Thank you. Thank you. And great. Thank you. Opus East Memphis uh, opens February 2023. For availability and more information about this particular community, please contact the Arbor Company, 901-763-8498. Thank you so much for being a part of this webinar today, and thank you so much for being a part of Senior Living Live. Have a great day, everybody. <laughs>